Yeah, no, my name is Felicia Simmons. I'm from the great city of Asbury Park, Asbury Park, Down the Hill, Neptune. Um, I'm a local born young woman. I am 39 years old and my relationship to the city is that I love it. I've been an activist in Asbury Park since the age of 18, um, actively working in the field of activism for the last five years and um, part-time activist statewide for the last 12. I'm a member of numerous organizations, but of all, I am an advocate for the whole of Asbury Park. <clears throat> the reason why I'm in politics today and where I feel that um, the understanding is because no longer can we sit back and just be inactive. I'm from a, a lost kind of generation, a generation in between. Um, we don't have a name. We're in between baby boomers and not quite a millennial. Those in between 36s to 44s. And we hear and we see the world um, different. We can see the world um, back when our parents days when we had the option of social security and pensions and security. But then we lived through the first crash and we know that those things might not be possible for us. We live in a time where we have to be active to secure our future and our children's future. Politics for me, when I got into it and I kind of fell in love with it, I decided to go back to school to study exactly what politics is and the structure of our country is. So I took a lot of political science classes. I, took, uh, I wanted to know an understanding of the dynamics of our government, our constitution, municipalities, um, uh, federal government, um, countywide government, all the way up. So I wanted, I have a complete understanding um, of what politics is and what my role will be. I am running for city council of Asbury Park right now because I feel that Asbury Park is in a crucial time. We're in a time of development, we're a time of growth, but we're also in a time where the country and the county and um, the world is, there's an assault on middle class and lower middle class. There's no upward growth um, seen in the future um, for that gap in space. And in these opportunities here, I've seen numerous injustice. I've seen the west side of our city um, being pretty much used. We being the only urban seat in Monmouth County, every federal dollar since the 1970s have come through Asbury Park. We're not talking about millions, we're talking about probably closer to a billion dollars for growth, for um, affordable housing, for programs to kind of bridge that gap <clears throat> like in the past. And we've seen decade after decade of no growth. Um, the West Side has not um, seen any growth since probably 1968, since that gap. The average income stated on paper is about $35,000 um, $35, a year for Asbury Park. But on the west side of town, the average salary is probably closer to 12. And when you, growing unaffordability, grow, less economic growth, I think that we're in a pivotal moment in time to kind of leverage everything and make this a model city that the world looks at. We're 1.4 square miles, and we can make a difference um, in the day-to-day -day lives of every resident of Asbury Park. The biggest concern in Asbury Park is affordability, quality of life and safety. Again, that is all wrapped up in one big ball. As the FDI statistics says that Asbury Park is the second most violent city in the state of New Jersey. We're saying that the violence occurs in a four block radius of the city, the 1.4 square miles. <clears throat> that plus <clears throat> the instability of stable housing, lack of economic, economic opportunities causes a sense of chaos. I, I believe like a sense of um, everybody suffers from a, a form of post-traumatic stress. We're constantly spinning in a ball of chaos. How would I address that? First, by addressing the affordability aspect of it. Let me rewind. Let's go back to first addressing the safety of it. We have about 100 police officers here in Asbury Park. We're 1.4 square miles. What worked in the past and what will continue to work throughout the country and specifically in Asbury Park is community policing. Community policing 
in all forms, meaning the resident has to take a lot of responsibility, which they have. There's a great group in town called the Kaziks that took their summer and their time to walk back and forth those four blocks throughout the summer. There are local police people, firefighters, and um, local activists in town who grew up here, who has a sense of pride for their home and won't leave it behind. That coupled with the city, um, getting back to, you know, boots on the street, and not just boots on the street where it's occupy the area, boots on the street where you speak to um, James and you speak to Kareem and you say hello, you might play a basketball game, they trust you, they have a growing relationship with you. Not more you occupy, but you're here for them in safety. You can't have a growth in a trust of a police system if you don't trust the police. And we have to bridge that gap. They're doing great things in cities next to us. They went back to that effort. You have to earn a police car. You have to walk the streets and know the community early. Then go back to affordability. Right now, we're in a strange economic um, program that was first introduced to the um, state. And a lot of cities opted out, but for some strange reason, we stayed in. That's where we assess every year. That assessing of every year doesn't benefit the average um, lifelong or wannabe lifelong residents of Asbury Park. That causes the property value to go up, which causes the taxes to go up, which causes uh, affordability, because it, le it lends itself to every elm, for the renter to the homeowner. <clears throat> that causes a state of influx, which builds into the chaos. And how would I address it? I will opt out of this program because I believe that it's next year where you have that opportunity to opt out. And we'll address the affordability more so in the tax rate with trying to go out and actively recruit rateables in town. Develop mindfully the empty spaces. Maybe go back to lot by lot development. An empty space doesn't bring as much revenue as a thriving business and, and, and a stimulation to our economic base. If I was elected, what would I specifically pledge to do? I was specifically pledged to always be accessible. I specifically pledged to always listen. I was specifically pledged to always be attentive and give 250% because our city, our residents deserve it. I pledge to be there ahead of time, later, earlier, to, to understand the different things and the plights of the people of the city. I, I pledge to also be there diligently, diligently to be part of the process. I don't want to just sit at the table. I want to help pick out the menu. I want the community to pick out the menu. I name my campaign from the people for all people because I am you. I live through these plights. I understand what everyone is going through. I understand the different aspects of the city from the west side from the west side and their their want for um, safety from the east side and their want for parking right from the nice homes and the bad roads we have a, a very diverse city and everybody deserves a voice part of the reasons why I did agree with um, the wards is because we crying out for the last 40 years to have a voice. Everyone in the city deserves to be heard. It's not a popularity contest when it comes to the work. You have to put in the work and hear from the people. I, I pledge transparency and I pledge to, to make sure that everybody is heard again. Thank you and have a good day.